Welcome to the last talk of the day. Um, we're here at uh, Intent and welcome to Operate the Talks in co collaboration with Tent and uh, CBK Rotterdam. Um, my name is Samira and we're going to talk with, of, I, I am going to talk with Gayatri uh, Kadikal. Am I saying it r right or yes, wrong? Yeah. Thanks I, for having <laughs> me. <laughs> I practiced a little bit, but I hope I did it okay. Yeah, you're great. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Nice. Yeah. You live in Rotterdam, right? Yes, I do. For I, uh, I've been living here for two years now already. Yeah. Do you enjoy it? Yes, I love Rotterdam. Yes. Nice. Good to hear. Good <laughs> to hear. And so, uh, Gayatri, you're an artist and a writer, and uh, you've worked with moving images, with sound, and um, also with games, games uh, slash arts installations. Yes, I've actually, this is my first installation uh, for a game. Uh, but before I was working with mainly digital, which is a video game, and uh, analog, which is the board game, the tabletop games. Yeah, because we're, we're standing or sitting right next to your uh, exhibition, or how do you call it, uh, your installation, The Traveling Hand. Yes. And it's your first game installation here in the Netherlands. Yes. yes. And it's, it's really cool. Thank you. And so I was reading about it, The Traveling Hand, and... Um, I really tried to understand it, but I had a difficult time. It sounded very mystic and kind of like a ghost story, but I couldn't really comprehend what what was going on. Yes, yes. It is actually kind of, I call it uh, the true story of a ghost. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it's based on um, an archaeological um, excavation uh, in India, in Goa, uh, where they found... By chance, actually, they were not looking for this, it. This is a true story. Yes, yes. They found uh, the remains of uh, a hand that belonged to a woman, a queen from Georgia. And she lived in the 17th century. And she died also in the 17th mm -hmm. century. Uh, but it was really mysterious how only the hand uh, landed up in Goa, in India. And so it, was it cut off? Yes. Oh, yes. that it even adds up to the story. Yes, it's a very macabre, uh, grotesque kind of <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. image. It is. Yeah, because you, you really love this, this kind of stuff, right? Well, actually, for me, it was more like, uh, um, yeah, the image of a dismembered uh, hand, but also, you know, how just this fragment of this woman's body became kind of like a playground for... Uh, you know, religious conspiracies, uh, national identity, and, you know, masculinist power plays and stuff like this. What were people saying? What, what was the theory? What happened to her? What happened to her? She was actually uh, um, a political prisoner or, you know, um, uh, she had come to negotiate uh, for po the Persian king Shah Abbas the I. Uh, she had come to negotiate that he doesn't invade Georgia. But he captured her instead and kept her as a political prisoner for 10 years in Iran, in Persia wow. at that time. And uh, finally, he kind of gave her an ultimatum to either marry him or choose death. And the death was by torture. Wow. And yeah. what do you feel when you think of her? What do I feel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, many things because... Uh, well, mainly that I wasn't really um, that interested in her life and, you know, the historical details of her life and death. But for me, it was more about the story of this hand that captured my imagination more. You know, how the hand landed up in Goa, how they decided to um, restart looking for it. When did that happen? Why were they looking for it? But, but how did you stumble upon this story? Yeah, that's a, that's a little bit of an <laughs> interesting story by itself. I was um, making a film on another uh, project, uh, and that was also based on a game, but it was like a ritual game that uh, a certain village plays in India. Uh, and they play it with a semi-divine being, like <laughs> a ghostly being. And one of the stories like led me to look for a ruin space, uh, you know, uh, majestic ruins. And I found these ruins, but 
I couldn't really enter because it was closed because they were doing an excavation. You were really on the site. You were there. Yes. Wow. I actually jumped over the fence (laughs) (laughs) to go look inside. By yourself? Yes. (laughs) Yes. That sounds super scary. (laughs) And uh, luckily, the archaeologists were quite friendly, and um, we I ended up having a great conversation, and that's how it all started. Really? Yeah. They were like, "Oh yeah, come come and see this. What's going on?" But, yeah. but you told them you were an artist, I guess. And no, actually, oh. <laughs> I think they thought I was an archaeologist. Oh, okay, that's me. Maybe better. <laughs> so, and and you and then you found out about the hand. I I do think it's super, yeah, intriguing. Yeah. Yeah, One, and I, I can see the hand. Right, that's not the real hand, I guess. Right, it's no. a mold. Yeah, that's the replica of uh, the actual hand that was found there. Yeah. And next to it is also the left, uh, the cast of my hand. So ah. I kind of like completed the hand. And why did you want to merge those two women together? Uh, I felt like I was sort of becoming part of her stories as well, like as I was investigating and journeying through and finding out more. Uh, she started haunting uh, In your Myla. dreams? <laughs> more than that. <laughs> even, even, you know, the people I would meet and how the story would progress. It was, it was almost like she was saying, you have to tell my story. Oh, really? Because yeah. I thought uh, that you said earlier that, that you weren't really interested in her story, but more in why they cut off her hand, maybe, or why the hand uh, uh, ended up in, uh, in India. Yeah. But now, but uh, when, when you continue to investigate it, uh, were you more interested in her? Um, no, it was, it was more about the story of this hand, yeah. you know, um, where it traveled and because it also became a German play. It did. Yes, uh, in the late 17th century. So for me, it was interesting how her death and um, this hand could produce these multiple stories. Yeah, that's even a layer yeah. underneath. Yeah. So what, when you think of her, what, what type of woman would, you, would she be, you think? I guess you thought about it, right? Yes, I mean, when uh, I did go to Georgia for uh, some research and they, they kind of described her to me as well as, as a very uh, attractive, beautiful woman, but much like bigger as a big personality and very courageous and brave. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's what I see. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and I've never been to Georgia, but I, I heard it's a very beautiful country, right? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. So um, the the inst- installation here it's it's a it's a game and it ma- the, uh, the word game sounds so you know uh, fun and, and uh, carefree maybe but um, what is the aim of this this installation for you? Well, actually, for me, uh, I feel like the way we tell s- histories, especially or the way we tell ourselves histories, needs to be discovered. Uh, you know, um, by ourselves instead of just reading from a book or looking at a film, you know, where it's just a one-way direction. In the game, you can actually investigate yourself and you can choose which part you're more interested in to find out. So um, I like that about the game. So I I saw a video on your website uh, also about the traveling hand and it was was really a board game. Mm -hmm. But here in Tent, it's more these tiles that you can jump on or I don't know. How does it work? Can you, like in a practical way? Yes. Um, Actually, the installation, the space is called the time temple. (laughs) Nice. And each tile that you see on the floor is uh, related to a piece of evidence from a certain time. So you can see like the year, the date, and what kind of evidence it is. So sometimes there's the monk's letter, or sometimes there's Rezo's birthday balloons, (laughs) you know. Uh, And this is all part of the storytelling as well. Uh, And each tile is, or the story in each tile is like locked by uh, a cipher that you need to decipher mm-hmm. like you need to yeah. uh, decipher using like a map and everything inside uh, and yeah and then you follow your own path so every time you play you play a different story 
Yeah. You you don't repeat the same pathway. And 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 you use sound and video as well, right? With this, yes. yes. I really want to play now. I'm super competitive, <laughs> by the way. Can you win the game, or is it more like a um, investigation? It's more it's an investigation oh. because. <laughs> uh, but in the board game, um, that's much more detailed. Where you can lose to the board, like uh, you know, you don't finish the story because the board wins. Yeah. Yeah. So so you've been an artist for for a while now. Yeah. When did you think of the concept of um game with art, the combination? Um actually through this particular really? story and this research. Yeah. I just felt uh that making a film or many films was not enough. And I started uh, looking at the game form also because I was playing. <laughs> and I just happened to write a script for a game and apply uh, for a residency in India. And then it started off from there. And I felt like game making can become a methodology for me also to think of meanings and meaning making and um, yeah, to think of complex things. Yeah. yeah, and you think it's important that people are looking at history in a different way, like you said before. Yes. Like to, sure. to get the knowledge, I guess. It's more about, uh, you know, you, you realize like how certain dominant histories uh, keep other histories secret, you know, so that that can take power. Do you so. think that happens a lot? Of course. <laughs> It's even happening now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. What, is, is that uh, something you want to explore a little more? Um, yes. I, even in Holland, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a relevant topic right now, of course. Yes. Yeah, actually, um, Western Europe is sort of realizing that they don't engage with their colonial past much and there's not much knowledge. But then how do we engage? With, you know, how does one really engage with that? It, uh, Um, it shouldn't be violent o as well, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's even relevant for the building we are in right now. I think you heard about the last summer, of course, with the, the name changing. Yes. Yeah. 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 So do you think you, you, you're going to zoom in on the Dutch history as well uh, in a while? Or are you going to leave us? <laughs> no, there is already a bit of Dutch history in the game But as yeah, well. <laughs> you see, I haven't played it yet, but I'm super, super curious about yeah. the... The yeah. game. Actually, Goa was a very crucial um, port for the Portuguese, the Dutch, the of English. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah, so there are a couple of battles that have happened in the sea just outside wow. Goa. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, why were you in Goa? Are you just traveling around or? Well, my father's side is from uh, that part of India. So I used to go there as a kid as well. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How can you um, describe Goa for me? <laughs> yeah, a I mean, it has. Question, <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, well, actually, I think the world knows Goa as uh, the center of the hippie culture, you know, back in the 60s. Uh, many of the hippie trails would uh, leave from London and l end in Goa, you know. Uh, through caravans and stuff like this. Um, why? Why was it there, by the way? Why was? Why were they? Where were they going to go? Do you know? I don't Maybe know. We should Wikipedia yeah. later. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a beautiful place with beaches, mm. and it's kind of way like a paradise. <laughs> so yeah. Hmm. But and so you are. So you, you told us you uh, are from India. And uh, you're going to stay in Rotterdam now, right? That's what you just told me before yes. uh, we started. Yes. And why uh, is it not a... Yeah, is it not too... Uh, wh why do you want to stay here? Let's, let's put it like that. <laughs> um, well, I find it much more... Um, I found that after coming here, uh, especially with the course that I did with the Dutch Art Institute... Uh, really good conversations about how I, about what I'm thinking about and the people I'm meeting here. And I also like Rotterdam for its very chilled out vibe uh, and friendly um, 
nature, you know. I'm happy to hear that people are nice to you uh, here. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Is it easy to meet people here or... Yes, yeah. I've, I found that it's much easier to meet people here in Rotterdam. And so how come uh, you ended up here? How did the collaboration start between you and, and Tent? Well, actually, um, I was asked to uh, come here uh, <laughs> in November last year uh, to meet uh, the curator, Katayun. Um, and then um, I showed her this work and she got very excited. And, you know, that's how it started off. This is also her first um, uh, curation, right? Here. Mm-hmm. Is it the yes. right word? By the way, I'm just <laughs> making up some <laughs> English words sometimes. No, it is. Yeah, it yes. is. Oh, yes. it was right. Yeah, yeah and, and, but, and you happened to meet each other by accident or she just saw you somewhere? or? Yes, we, we met at uh, the New Institute. Uh, um. Yes, for, I think we were there for, together for a seminar and we m- we just happened to speak and then and then she invited me to come to tent that's so cool and so uh, for uh, for how long can people enjoy this uh, game um you mean like yeah but w- it, till when is it till here when is it here uh, it's here till january 17th ah okay i have to come back before that time because i'm really curious though yes. yeah yeah and and what are your um, future plans are you going to do something else Yes, um, I mean, I've, I haven't been able to um, weave in the stories or the amount of stories uh, into the installation, you know. So I think I might take a text form and um, look at making some kind of uh, artist book out of this, inst- you know, this project. Yeah. Will it also be ghostly, haunting? Yes, uh, in fact... Uh, I'm also doing some lecture performances oh. as part of the, you know, to activate the installation here at Tent. Cool. Uh, and last performance, uh, we did have a, a ghostly presence here. <laughs> what is your? Why do you find it so fascinating? The 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 ghosts and the haunting houses and the and the myst- uh, mysteries. And the mysteries, uh, I don't know, it just somehow uh, makes you pay attention to things that um, you're not really conscious of, you know. You become sensitive to another kind of, uh, um, I wouldn't say a presence, but it's more like histories, you know. Uh, why is, what is this ghostly haunting? Is it is it an actual spirit or is it... Uh, about our colonial past? Is it about, you know, violence against women? Is it, you know, I don't know. It just, there is something about um, hauntings that can take you much deeper into why it happens. And so do you want to make people more aware or do you just want want to put it out there in another way? Um, I think people are already aware, Mm -hmm. of course, right? Ghosts are (laughs) age old. Uh, but I think uh, I want people to sort of enjoy the journey of uh, discovering a really interesting and detailed story. You know, it connects not only Georgia and India, but it also connects Portugal and Persia and Germany. You know, so it's yeah. it's quite interesting how everything comes together. Then my last question: Were you already uh, as a kid? Were you already fascinated by this kind of Themes, but these kind of themes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be the one uh, who was always telling the ghost stories. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. With the <laughs> flashlight and the. Uh, no. And the no. I didn't need that. <laughs> <laughs> Your stories are very good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, one more. And um, this this woman from from Georgia. Yes. So the the archaeolo- uh, archaeologist. Oh, that's a very difficult word in English. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, did they find out uh, find out more about her exe- except for that she was a queen, or and uh, in the story uh, with uh, with the man that, that she didn't want to marry? But was that was that everything they can find? Or yes, I mean, I think uh, I mean our, this particular in this case they were not really looking for it. So when they did find it, um, their main um, goal was to prove 
that these bones belong to this queen. Oh. So they had to find literary sources to confirm it and as well as doing a DNA analysis. That sounds like, like a miracle though, if you find a hen and you can just find the person who it belongs, who it belongs to. Well, they didn't do get a hundred percent match. Yeah. And that's why they also say that the, there's always doubt still remains. So the mystery is still... The mystery is still alive. Yes. And you love that. Yeah. <laughs> Gayatri, I really uh, enjoyed uh, meeting you and, and getting to know you and learning more about the traveling hand. Um, if, the, yeah, if the listeners want to see it, che- go check it out until January 17th. Yes, and to also keep in mind that it takes almost an hour <gasps> to play. That's even better. Yes. That's even better. So you have to sort of invest some time into playing the game. and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm definitely going to do it before that time, though. I'm really curious. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed uh, our talk. And thank you. Uh, yeah, well, everyone, thank you for watching, listening. And this was the last talk. So uh, enjoy your day.